We are joined in the Media Center by our pro stock winner in the Camping World Series here at the Las Vegas 4 wide at the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, Erica Enders, victorious once again, second victory of the year, 35th pro stock victory, second straight here at the 4 wide in Vegas. This win makes her the winningest driver at Las Vegas Motor Speedway of all time, nine wins, surpassing Tony Schumacher, uh, has won the 4 wide one in Vegas for four straight years, unbelievable stats, and uh, beat a ton of kids out there. In the final round, it was Christian Quadra runnering up Dallas Glenn Mason McGahey that Erica went through. Erica, walk us through your race day. You guys were very busy this weekend over there in the elite camp, so you had to even jump in on servicing some race cars over the course of the weekend, but you found a way to win in Vegas. Tell us about your victory. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, uh, it's nuts over there. We have seven cars under the Elite Motorsports Elite Performance banner. Um, all the engines are Elite Performance. So uh, we jump in when we have to. I service the engine on my car with Richard, and as soon as I was done with that, I would run over to Fernando Jr.'s car. Uh, TJ had to swing motors this weekend, so did Bo. So it's all hands on deck all the time. I think we had roughly 38 or 40 crew guys out here this weekend. So it's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts. and. It definitely takes uh, determination and focus to keep all the all the fish swimming in the right direction, if you will. So it was a it was a really good day. You know, it didn't start off uh, tremendous. I had my hype girl Courtney up there with me first round. I just I wasn't feeling it, and um, you know, coming off of that terrible hole shot loss while setting the world record in Gainesville. Um, that was a lot of crap to eat for a couple weeks while we had off. So um, going up there first round, I, I wasn't stellar on the tree, but thankfully Mark Ingersoll and the guys uh, up in the crew chief lounge had my race car tuned up and we were able to finish second of that quad getting into the next round. And um, that round I knew it was an all elite quad. Um, I knew I had to be on my game with, with TJ, with Christian. Um, who was the other one? Aaron. Aaron, damn it. That was the most important one, number one qualifier. So, uh, you know, I knew I had to be on my game there. We were 18, and then I think we were 18 or 19 in the finals as well. So they have my uh, my Melling Performance Hot Rod tuned up for sure. We we laid down a pretty stellar number there in the finals. So, you know, Vegas has always been good to me. Even when I haven't been good out here, we still are able to turn on wind lights consistently, and, and it definitely means a lot to me. Um, four wide, you know, definitely throws its challenges at you, and you, you have to be paying extra attention with all of the distractions going on up there. So it was... Uh, it was definitely a, a long, hard day. It was a little warm, the first warm race of the year. So getting a little sweaty, getting uh, getting our feet wet for the summer races and just really proud of my team, Joe. I, I mean, it's it's awesome to come come back from such a detrimental weekend last weekend or two weeks ago in Gainesville. Let's open it up to questions from members of the media, starting off with Josh from the National Hot Rod Association. Eric, obviously you've won a lot here, uh, more than anyone, you know, Greg, Tony, all of John Forsh, Caps, all these guys, you've got more wins than, than anyone here. You, always felt comfortable here I don't know is there what is it about this place that, that makes it so special for you and, and why you've done so well I'm, I'm not really sure what it is about Las Vegas I, I feel like my guys have a really great tune-up I mean everything changes out here it's a little bit of altitude it's definitely dry uh, crazy air so you have to have your tune-up right you don't want to be too lean when you burn your motor up um, so my guy I have to give a lot of the credit to my crew chiefs they have a ton of data here and they do a great job but um, you know, I'm not much of a gambler. I'd, I'd rather go shopping than gambling, but um, I love coming to Las Vegas just to drag race and get the heck out of here as soon as I can. So I'm thankful that, for the success that we've had here. Um, we scored our first win here. I scored my first win here with Elite Motorsports in 2014, winning the K&N Challenge on Saturday. Came back and won the race on Sunday, and that was our first win, national event win as well uh, at Elite Motorsports, and it's been quite the ride ever since there. Like Joe mentioned, 30, 35 wins and uh, a couple k and challenges, a bunch of world records along the way, and a few, more, a few world championships. So I'm, uh, I'm just proud to be their driver. Chris Bishop, Racing Pro Media. Uh, I hear your voice cracking a little bit today. <laughs> um, obviously, a little bit of emotion as well. How important was it to, for you to get the victory with Scotty O on the, on the back window? Um, it was huge. Uh, we, it was a really big part of our elite family. Uh, my lead engine builder, Jay Kirsten, and his brother, Clint, um, they own the Pro Mug car that I drive and burn to the ground in Norwalk, but um, they're, they're family, right? And Scotty was their brother. Um, Scotty's son, Scotty was a pro mod driver. Scotty's son, Joey, won the Midwest World Championship last year. He's a super talented kid. And, you know, Scotty just happy go lucky all the time, just delight in every room that he walked in. And I know that sounds cliche. A lot of people talk about people that pass on, but the world's going to be a darker place without Scotty. And, um, 
you know, we wanted, we came in here, we have a grease board in our trailer with like things to do. It mostly consists of racing stuff and what engines are where, when we need to service the generator. And all that was on the grease board this weekend was win Vegas for Scotty O. And that was our goal coming in here. And, and we did just that. So I'm, uh, I'm really thankful to have done that. He was riding along with us this weekend. And uh, this one's for the Oaks's family. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Lee Craft, Monday Morning Racer. Uh, Erica, if I give you some money, will you go bet red for me at the casinos? <laughs> I can't, but I don't know if you want me to do that. I lost a few hundred dollars last night, so oh, I would rather buy shoes or purses or something, but I'll put it on red. On a serious note, I've seen you before after losses such as Gainesville or whether it was World Door, World Door Slammer Nationals. Get the win here. How much easier does it make it to go back and do everything like sell trailers <laughs> into the week coming? Yeah, definitely go back um, to a normal life for a couple of weeks before we head to my hometown of Houston, Texas, and the last race there. So we'll hopeful, hopeful to have some success there as well. But um, you know, I took I took Gainesville really hard. Um, I also lost on a whole shot second round in Phoenix as well. So coming off of that awesome 900th Pro Stock win in Pomona. Um, kind of fell into a couple race slump there, but you know my sister reminds me all the time like we've had four races and you've won half of them, so try not to get too down on yourself. But I'm, I'm my worst critic. I take a lot of pride in my driving. Um, you know I, it, I've been racing pro stock for 18 years, but we didn't have any success the first nine. So it's, uh, it's been quite the ride with Elite Motorsports, and I'm, I'm really thankful for that. But it, it definitely makes going back to normal work easier when you, when you get to take a Wally on the plane home. <laughs> Tom Zaleski, I'm Kanye today. Hey, Erica. The the way you mentioned shop, you rather shop than gamble. <laughs> yes. How do you do? You, what do you want? What do you want to buy for the crew after uh, after today's session? I think they'll be happy with some cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they were talking about on the radio. We win this. I'm drinking tequila tonight. So I was like, all right, boys, here we go. Where's the party at? Where's the yeah. party at? Erica, you know, I don't want to dwell too much on Gainesville, but that was the quickest pro stock run ever. You say you take it hard. Like what? To bounce back like this, obviously, you were able to get your mind in the right spot. But just for people out there who, you know, think the cars are just going down the racetrack, racers win or lose, and go about their business, you carried that weight with you. What, you know, what was that like, and how did you get your mind right for this race? Well, I, I don't even necessarily think I showed up here with my mind right, to be honest with you. But I did my very best. I, I did an interview with Jamie Howe uh, on Friday before qualifying, and she's like, "What do you do? Like, do you practice? Uh, do you sit in a simulator? We went to Tulsa and tested, but..." I don't do much simulator work. I don't really believe in it because it's not, it's not a lot like the pro stock car, and you can get in a get in a bad habit of being light on the pedal, and you don't want to do that in the race car. So, um, you know, it's just the six inches between my ears. Honestly, it's getting in a positive mindset, believing in myself, and you know, my sister reminds me that all the time. Like, I wish you believed in you. Like, we all believe in you, and and it's hard to do as a driver sometimes. You know, you get in these little little funks but I got the greatest guys in the world you know Mark Ingersoll doesn't talk very much at all but he's on the radio pumping me up and he knows what he knows what to do to build confidence and I hear that confidence in his voice and, and in turn I you know sometimes show that in the cockpit so um that's kind of my goal this year you know I didn't I didn't drive extremely well last year we let that our fifth world championship slipped through our fingers you know Greg had a dominant car all year he should have probably locked it up before the countdown started but it just you know, it still came down to the semifinals in Pomona. So my goal this year is to just make every round count. I didn't do that in Phoenix, and I didn't do that in Gainesville. But, you know, you can only do the best that you can, and, and I'm the biggest variable of our entire program being human. So it's up to me to, to be positive, crack the tree, and hit my shifts, and we're going to give it our all this year. What do you think's going on out there, Erica, with the double O lights, Christian Quadra, double O, and Richard, when he was giving you the credit as being the greatest driver, uh, you know, he's ever worked with, he said, but these guys are really good and and it's just like the uh, the talent level the game the focus who knows exactly what and that's what i want your opinion on uh the game in pro stock has become so much more challenging in the last two years what do you think's going on it's it's definitely become challenging more challenging i mean when i first started 18 years ago i think the class average was roughly like 40 or 50 that's what you would see people throw up on the board and um you know we've all risen to the occasion and and brought the field to, to just a higher level of competition. I, I definitely feel like the younger guns coming in, it's it's a very dangerous way to race. Um, you know, we've, we've won championships and, um, you know, qualifying is different than racing. You gotta be able to put it together on Sunday when it matters and when the pressure's on. Like, I would rather have the weight on my shoulders, the weight of the world on my shoulders than to roll up there and, 
and run a guy that runs a tenth slower than me, you know, because you race you race differently when you can outrun people. So I just try to go up there with a the mindset that I'm running Greg Anderson and Jason Line every single time. But um, you know, these these younger kids are definitely doing a, a great job. And I'll tell you one thing about the Quadros, like amazing family. But Christian and Fernando Jr. are freaking amazing drivers. They really are, like, and they're students of the game as well as TJ and Aaron. So um, I think that uh, they'll definitely race the level of the game as well. So I uh, I definitely got to go to work, but double double O ain't gone yet, so. <laughs> um, on that topic, were, were you aware, and I know it's, it's hard to follow what's going on, but that Christian was actually ahead of you, and there's a good chance I think he might have won it if he's, his engine hadn't broke. I didn't. I didn't. Okay, you didn't see. What, I don't even know what lane he was in because we were rushing up there, and I just know I was in three, and right. I was counting the bulbs over. Yeah. But um, no, I, I I know what kind of power he has. I know what kind of driver he is. You know, he's a he's a couple hundreds behind, but um, you know, as my team owner says, if the crickets had pistols, the birds wouldn't mess with them. So <laughs> we turned the wind light on. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, but we got it done today. And and I'm so proud for the Quadra family. They are they are so gracious and so humble. And and those kids will definitely be parking those cars in the winter circle a lot. That was your 35th Pro Stock win, but 36th win of your career. That first win, a super gas win that happened at Houston, where we go next for the final race there. Just talk a little bit about that and how meaningful that race is going to be. To just be at, I hear ticket sales are through the roof, and you know, going to a place that is so special to you, perhaps for the final time. Yeah. Um you know, it's a little bit sad in a way. You know, if I ever have kids, I won't be able to take them back and show them where I, where I got my start professional drag racing. I mean, I had my first runs ever when I was eight years old in a junior drag through down that racetrack. So I've been going there for 31 years. And before that, um, you know, my sister and I going out there to watch my dad race. He raced sportsman for a lot of years. And um, it just holds a lot of really fond memories there. Um, as you mentioned, in 04, we got our first national event win there in super gas. And I was able to race my college roommate at the time in the finals. So it was definitely a lot of fun. And then um, our first victory there in Pro Stock was in 2014. We came back and won in 15. But that was in 14. That was the first race that my dad was at Pro Stock wise to see me win. So um, just a lot of really special memories. So sad it's going away, but um, we're going to try to make the best of it and, and go out with a bang. You know, hometown races are always a giant cluster with, with people and family and friends. But uh, that makes it, you just got to try to focus a lot harder when you're in those environments and I'm looking forward to going home and see if we can grab us another one. Erica, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank the you. winningest driver here at the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in history with nine. Breaking a tie with Tony Schumacher. Congratulations on your win. Thank, thank you. you. And to members of the media, thank you. <laughs>